Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. At the top stories, we are tracking for you on Monday to 28th of October. EU delegation meets Indian Prime Minister Modi ahead of Jammu and Kashmir visit. Former Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's health worsens. And U.S. Special Envoy returns to Kabul with renewed peace bid. And now for all the details. A delegation of over 25 European Union lawmakers on Monday met Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi ahead of their planned visit to northern Jammu and Kashmir. Their visit comes as the international gaze was turned towards Jammu and Kashmir after the Indian government revoked the special status granted to the erstwhile province in August. Members of the European Parliament met Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in capital New Delhi on Monday ahead of their planned visit to northern Jammu and Kashmir on Tuesday. Prime Minister Modi expressed hope that they have a fruitful visit to various parts of the country, including to Jammu and Kashmir. Their visit to Jammu and Kashmir should give the delegation a better understanding of the cultural and religious diversity of the region of Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh, apart from giving them a clear view of the development and governance priorities of the region. An official statement read, Talking about the need to strengthen engagement with EU on regional and global matters, Prime Minister highlighted the importance of close international cooperation to fight terrorism. Terrorism and radicalism, particularly threaten diverse and democratic societies like India and Europe. Close international cooperation is essential to fight terrorism. Urgent action must be taken against all those who support or sponsor terrorists or support such activities and organizations or use terrorism as a state policy. The visit comes as the international gaze was turned towards Jammu and Kashmir after Article 370 that granted special status to the erstwhile province was abrogated by the government on 5th of August. India has maintained that the move was an internal matter and assured the international community that it was taking steps to normalize the situation. News Justin, an identified terrorist hurled a grenade at civilian at a bus stop in India's Jammu and Kashmir's Sopo, injuring seven. While security forces immediately cordoned off the area and began a combing operation, reports suggest that some civilians sustained severe injuries. The incident comes just days before the centre is set to roll out the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganisation Act on 31st of October. Moving on, a layer of haze blanketed India's national capital, New Delhi, and its air quality dipped to very poor category on Monday post Diwali, the festival of lights. The overall air quality index crossed the severe mark at many places, forcing some residents to complain of breathlessness. The air quality in Indian capital New Delhi turned hazardous on Monday morning after revelers let off fireworks long into the night to mark Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights. The air quality index, which measures the concentration of poisonous particulate matter, touched 500 in Lodi Road area, indicating severe category, way above the safe limit of 60. Cyclists wore face masks and morning walkers complained of breathlessness as they stepped out early in the day amid thick smoke engulfing the city. People have used a lot of crackers, which we have to take in the morning. We don't believe that we are only 5 days here. In the morning, we saw that we didn't wear masks, but we bought a lot of masks from the shop so that we can use masks and save pollution. 
Indians celebrated Diwali on Sunday by illuminating their homes with lights and candles and offering prayers followed by a lavish feast and bursting firecrackers. Each year, smoke from festival firecrackers significantly adds to the pollution levels in Delhi and its satellite cities, resulting in a haze that usually lingers for days as wind speed drops during winters. We go to Delhi walk, we go to the garden, we go to the garden, we go to the road, but today we have so much more than two days, we have to go to Delhi. But today I don't have the courage that I can go to Delhi. There is so much more than two days, we have to go to Delhi, we have to go to Delhi. Meanwhile, government has directed implementing agencies and neighboring provinces to intensify anti-pollution measures up to mid-November so that there is immediate impact on air quality. Among a host of measures to curb pollution, the government is using water sprinklers to make the smoke settle. The government has also decided to restrict use of private cars between November 4 to 15. In is from Pakistan. Pakistan's jailed former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's health deteriorated on Sunday as his blood platelets count reduced following by breathing problems. This comes just days after he was granted bail by two courts on health and humanitarian grounds. Pakistan's jailed former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's health deteriorated on Sunday as his blood platelet count reduced followed by breathing problems days after he was granted bail by two courts on health and humanitarian grounds. Sharif was rushed to a hospital on October 21 night from the anti-graft body's custody after his platelets dropped to a critical low level of 2000. Sharif on Saturday also suffered angina while undergoing treatment at a Lahore hospital. The Islamabad High Court had on Saturday granted bail to Sharif in the Al-Azizia corruption case till October 29 in which he is serving a seven-year imprisonment. He had also secured bail in the money laundering case from the Lahore High Court. Bail was granted in both cases on medical grounds. Meanwhile, reports suggest that Sharif's daughter Maryam Nawaz has been given special permission by the Punjab government to stay with him. The Awami Action Committee has expressed concern over the occupation of the Special Education Centre by the Pakistani government in Gilgit, Baltistan. Gilgit, Baltistan, a region under Pakistan's illegal rule, lacks laws to protect the rights of the specially abled. Chairman of Awami Action Committee, Maulana Sultan Reis, has expressed concern over the occupation of the premises of the Special Education Center by the government in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baldistan. Pakistan's National Accountability Bureau, or NAP, opened its sub-office in Gilgit in July, taking control of the premises, which has inconvenient specially abled students. While addressing a press conference, Maulana Sultan Reis called it a clear case of accesses and violation of basic rights of the persons with disabilities in Gilgit, Baldistan. <laughs> گورنمنٹ آف گلگت بلدستان نے اس تناظر میں کوئی اقدامات اٹھائے ہیں لہذا ایک ہی ادارہ جو ان کی بہتر مستقبل کے لیے بنا اس کے اوپر بھی قابض ہونا یہ ہمارے لیے پوری اس گلگت بلدستان اس خطے کے لیے لمحہ فکری ہے the Special Education Center also houses the only hostel for the specially able students in the region which NAP is not agreeing to vacate despite several requests Gilgit Baldistan, a region under Pakistan's illegal rule, lacks laws to protect the rights of the specially abled. In news from Afghanistan, U.S. President Donald Trump's top negotiator for Afghanistan, Zalmay Khalilzad, on Sunday, briefed Afghan President on peace efforts on his first trip back since U.S. President Donald Trump ended talks with the Taliban. U.S. Special Envoy Zalmay Khalilzad met Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah in Kabul on Sunday for the first time since U.S. President Donald Trump abruptly called off the peace talks with the Taliban last month. The meeting focused on reaching a permanent ceasefire and concerns over delays in talks with the politicians calling on the U.S. to resume talks with the Taliban, local media reports said.
The Afghan government has made assurances that the comprehensive delegation is prepared for the intra-Afghan talks and considers the ceasefire to be one of the preconditions to start talks. Talks with the Taliban on a plan to withdraw U.S. troops from Afghanistan in exchange for Taliban security guarantees were halted by Trump last month following the death of a U.S. soldier and 11 other people in a Taliban bomb attack in Kabul. Before the U.S.-Taliban talks broke off, both sides said they were close to reaching a deal despite concerns that a U.S. withdrawal could bring more conflict and a resurgence of Islamist militant factions. The Taliban has refused to talk to Ghani's government, denouncing it as U.S. puppet. Entrepreneurs and designers from Bangladesh showcased traditional and heritage products at Heritage Handloom Festival 2019, recently held in capital Dhaka. The four-day festival aimed to promote local handloom products and prevent the extinction of traditional items. Entrepreneurs and designers from Bangladesh showcased traditional and heritage products at Heritage Handloom Festival 2019 in capital Dhaka last week. The four-day festival was organized by Small and Medium Enterprise Foundation, an association of fashion designers of Bangladesh, in collaboration with the Bangladeshi Ministry of Cultural Affairs. The festival aimed to promote local handloom products and prevent the extinction of traditional items. Products from as many as 15 sectors, including jute, khadi, cane, bamboo and folk art, were displayed at 45 stalls during the festival. While models presented handloom dresses and products during the ceremony, hand weavers demonstrated their skills on small traditional wooden weaving machines. Tihar festival, the second biggest festival in Nepal, is being celebrated across the country with religious fervor. During the five-day festival, people worship cows, crows and dogs, symbolizing a spiritual connection between humans and animals. The Festival of Lights, Tihar, also known as Dibavali, the second biggest festival in Nepal, is being celebrated across the Himalayan nation with religious fervor. The five-day festival, which honors Yama, the god of dead, formally began on Saturday with the worship of crows known as the informants of Yama. On the occasion, people offered food to crows as part of rituals of Tihar festival, which also worships animals as well as a human body. The festival is also known as Yama Panchak as it is celebrated for five days. Yama Panchak ko pailo din mane ra kaak tiyar lai line garin cha. Ani aaja ko din cha amle kaak lai man pane khana aru. Ani kaak lai jis puja garer ra kaak lai yad garer ra puja garer ra. Ani usle man pane khana masu aru cha daer puja garne garin cha. Apart from crows, cows and dogs are also worshipped during Tihar festival which symbolizes a spiritual connection between humans and animals. Goddess Lakshmi, the Hindu goddess of wealth and prosperity, is also offered prayers during Tihar. People elaborately decorate their houses and workplaces and also light lamps during the festival of lights. Tourists have started returning to Kashmir Valley almost two weeks after the authorities lifted the travel advisory from India's Jammu and Kashmir, which was imposed in August due to security reasons. India's Jammu and Kashmir witnessed tourist movement in its Pehelgam town on Sunday, almost two weeks after authorities lifted the ban that it had earlier imposed on tourists visiting the region. Thousands of Indian tourists, pilgrims and workers had left the region in August after authorities issued a security alert over possible militant attacks by Pakistan-backed groups. Telephone and internet services were soon suspended and public movements were restricted in some areas after the government announced it had revoked the region's special status. New Delhi, however, lifted the travel advisory earlier this month and partially restored communication lines in the region thereafter. I was very excited to come to Pelgaon. 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 So, I was very excited to come to Pelgaon. And I will always come to Pelgaon. I will always come to my family. And all my friends and relatives, I will advise everyone to go to Kashmir and make a new Kashmir. 
Kashmir touts itself as a paradise on earth and is known for its mountains, glaciers and lakes and was a favorite destination centuries ago for Mughal emperors escaping the summer heat of India's plains. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.